Hello YouTube, it's Andy again. I have another tutorial for you today. Um, today I'm going to show you a little predicament. I've shown you how to do swipey tabs in the past, but I'm going to show you a little predicament you might have with the, um, with the tabs up here. You notice that you get a set defined width. Now if you have a name that's short like this, like fragment one, it's probably not an issue for you. However, let's, um, let's say you had a long name for a title of a fragment. Uh, I, I, I'm going to create an, an instance right here. Super long, ridiculous name. Now we're going to run this application now and I'll show you what the, what the problem is. Uh, so let's run it. Now when we run this program, you get this kind of ugly looking name and uh, what some of you might even uh, see is that it gets cut off or you can't fit all of the text in there depending on the operating system, screen size and whatnot. That's all determined by the Android operating system not, and there's nothing really you can do about it about that using this type of uh, layout where you have the action bar controlling the tabs. However, um, Jake Wharton, the same guy who developed Action Bar Sherlock, has a nice little um, package called View Pager Indicator. Um, now, if you don't know what that is, that's perfectly fine because it is going to give you a similar layout as the Play Store. Uh, this is another application called WooCheck uh, where you see there's um, you have your your current fragment title is going to be right in the middle and then your next fragment is going to be loaded up right on the, uh, right next to it. Now this particular application does not use the same library because this one's only um, uh, 4.0 and up application. However, you could technically use this library to get achieve the exact same layout as this application on older devices while uh, by combining it with uh, Action Bar Sherlock and um, get a pretty similar smooth effect. So uh, also the Play Store is what I'm going to sort of mimic today um, with the green text and green um, bar here. Uh, I didn't copy the exact gray, but uh, if you, you'll, I'm providing the source code so you'll see what that looks like. As a bonus today, I'm also going to show you how to actually import these libraries and uh, how to actually import one of um, the zip files that I provide as the source code. So you're going to get these uh, downloaded zip files. You want to extract them. And then this is actually the library for that view page or indicator. So we're going to extract that as well. And we have, the, we have this folder here and this folder here that we're going to use for our, our program. So what we're going to do now is first we're going to import um, our, our projects. So let's close that. So we're going to go new project, uh, Android project from existing code. Now let's import the um, library first. So we're going to browse for it. It's on my desktop. And here's the view, page, view pager indicator master. Now this is all you need to do if you want to import the sample application. Um, if you just want the library, you can do that. But the sample application has very good um, sa uh, examples for achieving different looking effects like uh, little dots on the bottom, you know. But he has themed, unthemed, you know, you name it. There's a plenty of good examples. And uh, I just tore apart one of his samples and uh, changed it up a little bit to be, make it a little bit more useful to you. Uh, in his sample, he just has a bunch of repeating text instead of actually putting fragments. And in my sample, I'm going to show you actually how to use fragments that you may have already and put them into your, uh, an application to make this work. So we'll, see, we'll import both of these. So you'll see this is the sample in the library. We want to um, import them. So we'll finish that. Next, you're going to get this list samples and library. Um, I don't like having just library around because it doesn't really tell me what library it's for. So I like to rename it. Uh, let's see. Is it going to let me rename it? And it 
looks like. Let's try this. That's not let me rename it. Alright, let's close everything up. So I'll just relaunch uh, Eclipse and see if that's what's going to... By the way, the errors that I had on Eclipse were actually because I had um, uh, DDMS open to take this screenshot here. Uh, it actually was working just fine. So let's see. I'll open it again. There we go. Oh, it's still it's still building the system, so we'll wait till that completes. Okay, now let's try to rename it. So this one we're gonna name view uh, pager indicator library. We'll rename this Okay, well that doesn't really matter. So we're going to import the, the other project now. So the example that I'm actually going to provide to you as well. I'll give you the link to the ViewPager um, indicator website so that you can get that uh, straight from the source. And we want, again, Android project from existing code. Now I just made this on uh, my other computer, so uh, that's why I'm importing it and kind of showing you how to do that. So let's get this uh, vPager example. And here it is. Now you're going to see if, um, since I made this on uh, my computer, and since my computer is not the computer you're going to be using for the source code, uh, you're going to have this little error automatically. Now that's because I've linked it to this library but on my other computer. So when we go to properties and go to Android, you'll see this file doesn't exist because that's on um, my other computer. So we can remove that one and we can add another one. And we're gonna add this library. So we're gonna apply that. Now you're gonna get all these um, jar mismatches and everything like that. Uh, you wanna compile with the same uh, level as your library. So we're gonna compile that with that. We're gonna Change this one as well to most current version to compile against. Um, also, uh, there since there is a recent update, there's also the support libraries that were updated as well. You're going to want to update those on all your um, applications together. So we'll do that one. Oh, sorry. See, now there's no more error here because now we are using the same um, 
dependencies here on both uh, both projects. So that's why there's no no more errors. Now I can uh, so I can run this and show you exactly what the program's going to look like. So uh, let's see. Run as Android application. Now this might automatically launch on my phone since I have that connected. Okay, here we go. So here's what you're going to see when you do the example. Um, I have the four fragments with the four fragment titles and uh, I'll show you how to add those and what the code insists right now. So let's close this out. Let's tear this code apart. So I have my four fragments right here with the four views that I line up with them which are just text views. Now there's only one um, main activity view and you have your main activity and your um, adapter. This text fragment is actually not used anymore. I use that as a, a basis to base the fragments off of to adapt the old code with the new code. <clears throat> so you need two different things. You need a view pager title page indicator which is actually uh, something that's very specific to the library that we're implementing. So without the library this does not exist. And then this does though. This is just a Android supports view pager. So this is what actually allows us to swipe across the, the screen. So to set the colors for everything, um, background is black. Uh, you have the text is this green, which is an Android green color. The footer color, which is the little bar on the bottom, is also green. You have a line height of one uh, density specific pixel. Um, the indicator height is three pixels. So actually, this is going to be the, the bar. And then um, the selector color, it, whenever you have um, the fragment that's selected, it's also going to be green. And uh, it'll automatically bold the text if you want to. You can set this to false or just not include it. I think the default is false. Um, but if if it doesn't work, if it's still bolding it, then add this and just put false. So uh, here's the little code to uh, set up the little indicator bar at the top. Now uh, then we're going to add our uh, main activity. We're going to set that as our content view. Uh, set our, our adapter as this adapter that we're going to create right here. So that's this test fragment adapter. We have our view pager, which we're calling because we named that uh, named that view pager pager. So right here. So we're gonna call it by finding the view by ID. I don't know what's up with me today. I'm striking out. Uh, set it the adapter for it as the test fragment adapter, and uh, set an indicator for it. Uh, basically, this indicator is gonna be what's passed on to the adapter to let the adapter know what page it's on and to use the indicator for that page. So that's very important. It's very simple looking code with a lot of uh, more complex backend here in the library. So these specific um, um, classes are what allow us to um, put in it. So this indicator is actually that, that the title page indicator that we're putting in. But it allows us uh, to work with the adapter to display the exact um, text that we want. And uh, it's very simple code. Um, as you'll see, the adapter class is not very hard. Uh, and it's been made simplified for the, and, um, for the new developer by Jake Wharton. So big props to him. Makes this a lot easier than... Uh, you know, it probably would be normally. So this is what the text was there uh, before in the sample that I tore apart. It had, uh, this is a text a test and it repeated the text 20 times um, on the on the on each page. So this first page was this, it had the this as the title and this as the text. Then the next page had is as the title, is as the text, a, you know, so on and so on. Uh, you can put any string there and it would make as many pages as you needed 
and also um, repeat the text um, inside the fragment as many times. But it wasn't really a fragment because it was just um, creating a view, a, a layout inflator uh, with a, a linear layout. Not tech. I mean, you can think of it as a fragment, but if you have these views already created, that uh, like a complex view that you want, this is going to be how you're going to do it. So um, you have your fragment adapter, fragment manager, FM, Super FM. This is uh, exactly the same way as it was on uh, the other view pager example. Now, if you're going to set icons, you would use this method, but since we're not setting icons, it's returning a null. Uh, value so we're not using icons but if you were this is what you would do uh, you'll probably see this uh, code used if you do a little if you see the sample code for the indicator with the little uh, balls on the bottom that's like one's colored and when you swip to another page the second page the second ball is colored stuff like that it's got a bunch of different examples that I highly recommend you checking them out so we want to set our fragments so this is where we're going to say, you know, page one is going to be fragment one, page two is fragment two, page three is fragment three. But since we're dealing with Java code, remember we start at zero, and four is going to be number three. So we're going to return this fragment. So that's nice for the, um, for the view pager, but how are we going to do that for the uh, title page indicator? So here's the title. We're going to say that the default title is nothing, um, but if the page is one, we're going to say that the title is fragment one. So let's say you, you have fragment one here, but you wanted to set the title for something else. You would put the title here because we're naming it. This is just a string. This is a class. So even though I have them named as the same thing, you can change them up and they'll still coincide. Um, so how does the, the view pager know how many different uh, pages we have? We have this uh, M count. So if you hi highlight it, this uh, M count is actually um, I created four fragments and that's why it's working. But technically, uh, we wipe out this string. We can set the M count to um, how many fragments we have. Uh, so I apologize. It just coincides that this program doesn't crash, but it would have if I had deleted this and or put uh, five fragments and it ended up only having four here. So you can change this to fit your needs, this length. Um, you can set the string as your titles if you wanted to and then do that as setting the length. If you, There's a bunch of different ways to get the count just as long as you know how many there are um, you can even just set it as an integer. So you can say private and M count equals four. We can put that there and it would still work. Uh, so, uh, but if you're gonna create a program where you're gonna put in new fragments and then have new titles, depending on you know where you are in the app, you might wanna change it to a code like this where you're pulling, where you're creating a string or creating some kind of array and then getting the length of the array. So I apologize, I did not take into account. It just so happens to work and I hope this explains what this M count is. So, and then, uh, yeah, we're gonna set the, the, the count down here. Um, this is a little uh, method that passes on whenever you change the page, this notify data set change notifies the view page or indicator in one line of code that uh, the you're no longer looking at the page that you thought you were and you should change the title. So that's it. This is all you need to do. This is very, very simple. Um, so I hope you like this example and I hope it didn't drag out too long. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. I'll have 